Now, you remember I said that cells are made of bacteria and we are made of cells ganging up. Well, there are also colonies of individual bodies, social insects, in which the entire colony can be thought of as one big copy-me digression. This is a bivouac of army ants from South America. This is a great sheet of millions of ants. And the next one. Here are just two ants, not army ants, a different species. That one is the sister of that one. They're both members of the same colony. They're both workers. Both are needed by the colony. And so both are there, even though they're such colossally different sizes. And the next one. This is what it's all about. This worker here is feeding a young queen with wings. Those wings are for carrying the DNA of the colony on into the next generation. The entire colony is one machine geared to passing its DNA on into the future. And the next one, this is the queen of a termite colony. You see she's huge. She's a gigantic egg-laying machine, a walking egg-laying machine, except that she can't walk. She's too big to walk. There's a king termite to show the same scale. She's producing eggs to go on into the future. These are honeypot ants. They're workers specialized to act as honey stores. These are the armor plates of the body, and they've been stretched apart by this gigantic honeypot here, filled with honey. All that this does is to hang in the roof of the nest like a light bulb. And when times are good, it gets filled up with food. When times are poor, uh, the food is drawn out again. This is part of the machinery of the entire colony. These colonies are very impressive in what they can achieve. This is the nest of a South American fungus ant, a great underground structure, huge underground cavity. There's a man to the same scale. This is the sort of thing that can be achieved when you have colonies of individual bodies ganging up together. And this is another example. These are weaver ants stitching up together leaves to make their nest. There's one worker holding on to the, the junction there, a different view. And now we're going to see another worker with a lava, which is used as a tube of glue or silk, and it stitches across, like, see how it's moving across with the lava? There's another one there, moving across with the lava, stitching up the junction between these two leaves. They're making a nest for the entire colony. This you could think of as the body of the colony, which is there for the purpose of carrying on the genes that made them do it. We began by asking what flowers were for. We considered various answers and eventually concluded that flowers offer the same thing as everything else in the living kingdoms, for spreading copy-me programs about, written in DNA language. Flowers are for spreading around instructions for making flowers. Bees are for spreading around instructions for making bees. Elephants for spreading instructions for making elephants. And birds for making more birds. A macaw's coloured feathers are for spreading copies of instructions for making more coloured feathers. And that works because the coloured feathers are an advertisement that attracts macaws of the opposite sex. So genes that make coloured feathers tend to get passed on to future generations because they are an effective advertisement to get mates who like those coloured feathers. And you could say the same about wings. Wings, too, are tools for spreading genetic instructions, for making wings into future generations of birds. They work by saving the lives of birds that have good wings. And so they're good at flying, good at catching food, good at avoiding being eaten. So genes that make good wings get passed on, and that's why most birds have wings that work. So thank you very much, McCaw. Plants don't have wings. Plants can't fly. But from the plant's point of view, it doesn't need wings, since it can borrow the bees and butterflies and hummingbirds' wings. But now let's shift our perspective and look at it from the point of view of the plant DNA. From the point of view of the plant DNA, the bees' wings might as well be plant wings. The bees' wings are organs of flight that carry 
the plant's genes about, just as a macaw's wings are organs of flight that carry macaw's genes about. And we can say the same about the colours. Flowers use bright colours in very much the same way as macaws use their bright colours. Both kinds of colour are advertisements. Both are used to attract winged gene vehicles. In one case, those winged gene vehicles are female macaws. In the other case, they're bees. But in both cases, the result of the attraction is that genes are carried about. The macaws mate. So the genes that made the male have attractive feathers are carried off in the female's body. The bee gets dusted with pollen from a flower. So the genes that made the flower attractive to the bee are carried off on the body of the bee into the future, into future generations. So if you look at them in the right way, bees' wings can really be called plant wings. Now that really is a different way of looking at things, isn't it? A strange and unfamiliar way. Yet it is a way that makes perfect sense when you think about it. A way of looking which matches the strange otherworldliness of the ultraviolet garden. Well, in the last of these five lectures, we shall be coming on to the human brain and how it managed to get so big. Thank you very much.